Hi, this is Griff Patch. This is my second part of my top-down scrolling uh, game uh, tutorial for Scratch. Uh, today we are going to look at how to add in enemies. Uh, this is a very simple enemy artificial intelligence. Let's start by adding in a new sprite, like so. And this is going to be an enemy cube. So let's add in uh, a new color for this enemy cube, and I'm going to make it green. I kind of nasty dark green because it's a zombie and I'm going to just draw it in here like this again with shift to make it square there he is my zombie cube so this guy here is going to be following my player so let's just call him zombie cube into code now he needs an x for this sprite only and another variable y for this sprite only, and he's a lowercase, not uppercase, because they're for this sprite only. Let's have in a event, and when I receive setup, like that. Now this is where we position the zombie cube for his first initial appearance. So we'll set X and Y, and we can't use zero because that will be right on top of our cube. So let for now let's put minus um, 200. By zero which is pretty much where he is now okay and then we also need if we go into um, the level sprite let's drag in this move level into the zombie cube because that will then quickly position him properly for well scrolling so let's just run that so here we go there's our zombie cube and he nicely scrolls with the level which is what we want Now you'll notice if we go off the edge of the screen, he stays stuck to the edge. So we'll have to fix that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is add in a custom block, make block and call it position. And we're gonna have an argument of X and an argument of Y, one without screen refresh. So, okay, and now in here, we're going to add in our go to block like this, put the new position into the more level receiver. And then your X minus scroll X, Y minus scroll Y go in there. Then the X and Y can go in like that. Okay, now the reason we do this is we're now gonna add another variable called is visible, all lowercase, and for this sprite only. And we can set that here under the go to. And in here, we're going to add in an and then two equals one on either side like this let's make a little bit more room for us and in here we're going to have x to y and then we need the actual positions on the screen so x position and y position so is visible is going to be set to true when we manage to position the uh, zombie cube where he was supposed to be. If he doesn't go where he's meant to be, his visible will be false. Let's just watch that in action. If I run this project now, so is visible is true. So the zombie cube's there, which is good. If I move too far to the right, it's now gone to false. So he shouldn't be showing then. So is showing, shouldn't be showing. You can see the true and false changing. We can make use of this fact to hide him when he's off screen. And more than that, um, what we're going to do with this game is we only move the zombie cubes when they are on the screen. If they're off screen, they don't move, so they don't um, walk onto screen. Otherwise, all the zombies on the whole level would come straight at you at the very beginning and not be where they're meant to be. They're meant to kind of appear as you find them on the level. So that's what we're going to use, this true and false here. Okay, so let's go back to the program. We can hide that variable visible now. So what we want to do is have this enemy cube move towards the red player, but only when he's on screen. So let's give that a go. Um, in the player sprite, we still have this loop here. So we move the player, we move the level, and next we want to move the uh, enemy cubes. So let's create another broadcast underneath. And we're gonna call this move enemy like so okay 
and we can go back into our enemy sprite. In fact, let's rename this to zombie or enemy. You can choose what you want to call it. Um, and we're going to have a receiver in here. And I receive move enemy. So let's put an if else in here. And what we're going to do first is we're going to check whether we're on screen. And we've got that in this is visible. So if we put an equals, go into variables and have, uh, not my variable, is visible, and put in here true, T R U E. Okay, just like it was set to. So when it's on screen, it runs this bit, when it's off screen, it runs this bit. So first of all, let's go into looks and hide when it's in the off screen, show when it's on the on screen. Let's run that and just make sure that works. So he's visible. Off screen disappears, on screen appears. So now he's no longer sticking to the side of the screen. Right, what are we going to do when we want to move our little player then? So let's add in a custom block for moving him. And we'll call it um, follow player. Run without screen refresh. Okay. And move that underneath the show like that. And let's uh, move this down even further. So follow player. What are we going to put in here? Right. So we need an if statement. And then we need some comparisons. So if, for example, the uh, player is to the right of zombie cube, we want to move right. So let's put a greater than. Now this wants to be the position of the player. So for that, we have to look in sensing and this block here where it says backdrop of stage. Now it might seem a bit strange, but this is the one we need because in here you can change stage to player. Now watch out, it jumps up to the top and it always does that, but uh, I think they're going to fix that bug soon, hopefully. Um, change the left hand side, you can now choose the variable x, not x position, x because that's the variable of our player sprite that holds where our player is. There we go. So now we can say if the position of the player is greater than x, like so. Now this x is our zombies x. So if the player here is bigger than the zombies x, so to the right of, we want to move our zombie to the right. So now we can borrow these scripts from player. So just like in here, where we move a direction if a certain condition is true. So let's move this custom block into zombie. Now where did it go? There it is. Let's just put it over here for now. So if it's to the right, we want to try move. And we'll move it one pixel to the right and we won't move up. Try one comma zero. Okay, let's just go and have a look at our try move. We might need to change this a little bit. Okay, what we need to change in here is rather than doing the go to, let's use our position that we created um, and move the whole positioning variables into that instead. So not using the go to. And the reason we want to do that is that this position, if you remember, Look down here, also sets the is visible. So we know that if we try moving to a new position with our zombie cube, if we position him off screen, then we don't want to allow him to do that because we don't want to allow the zombie cube to move away from the screen um, because that can cause problems because you can't tell if it's touching a wall if he's moving off screen because the touching uh, color only works if it's on screen, which is a big problem for the scrolling games. So we're going to get around that by detecting if he's off screen and then not letting him move. So put in a and down here into the, uh, the if block. And we're going to check that he's on screen here. So only allow him to actually move equals is visible. Where is it? There it is, is visible. So is visible equals true. And he's not touching a wall, then allow him to move. Let's just delete that my variable. Really don't need it. That's better. Causes more confusion than it needs to. 
Okay, that means he should, let's just run that, see if it actually works. Hey, look at this. So he's now moving to the right. Now, of course, he can't hurt me, and he can't move any other direction apart from to the right. Let's just see whether he can get through the wall if I move around here. Nope, stopped. That's brilliant. So let's put in his other directions. Where is, here we go. So in the follow player. So at the moment, we've only got the moving to the right. Let's add in some other ones. So duplicate that. So if he is less than, less than, less than. If player X is less than X, like that, then move him by minus one. So now he should be able to move left as well. So the moment he's moving to the right, gone on the other side of him, now he moves to the left. So now all we need is up and down. So let's do that. So if we duplicate these, so it's going to be Y of player now and Y of player and the variable y and the variable y. So if y of player is bigger than y, we want to move up. So through 0x, 1y in the try move, and then this one, 0 and minus 1. So moving up and down. Let's run that now. And now you see it's quite happily following me. If I move down here out of the way, he is desperately trying to follow me, but he's not going to get me because I'm far too fast for him. If I move off screen, come back, he moves, disappears. Now he should not be following me now. So if I come up on here, he should appear. See, he's not following until he's on the screen. There we go. So this is a really big start towards our game. At the moment, he's not getting stuck on anything, which is quite impressive because when I was playing earlier, he would get stuck on walls quite happily. And we're going to have to fix that because it does happen. OK, one more tweak that we need to uh, to do to this is in the. Oh, here we are at the bottom of the follow here. We need to move him to exactly where he's supposed to be at the end of moving because if we try to move and it failed it leaves him still overlapping the, uh, the level so all we need to do for that is add in another position call all we need to do for that is copy the uh, this position here in the move level and put that at the bottom of the follow player like that so after we finished moving, it positions him where he's meant to end up. I'll just run that and make sure that all works. You shouldn't really notice much difference. There we go. So we have one zombie cube, but it's really only going to get really exciting when we have lots more. So this is the end of this tutorial, but next time I'm going to introduce lots more zombie cubes and how you set them up nice and easily, and it's going to make the game much more fun. So join me next time. Subscribe to me. Thanks for watching. This is Griff Patch. Bye now.